Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store. Uh, that's Gunzy. Hi. That's Phil. Yo. And that's Romeo. Yo. And uh, these three have picked some ukes so we can do another blindfold challenge here at Southern Ukulele Store. So what have you picked for me, guys? Don't give me any names, but have you tried to scupper me? What have we, what, give, give people a taste of what's to come. Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've, you've got some tasty tenors coming your way. About, about five of them. So five tasty tenors. That's what the video is going to be called. Let's begin. Boom. I've got my blindfold on. Can I have you number one, please? You can only number one. I love how balanced this is. First of all, this is a really balanced, transparent sounding ukulele. I've done a lot of recording recently and you realise just how beneficial it is to have a ukulele that can smooth out the lows and smooth out the highs and just give you something clean. And I think it's, um, I think it's a rebel because it feels to me like it has a smaller string spacing and sound wise it's got that low G, it's got the unwound low G on. So I'm, I don't know, it could be the um, Rebel Invictus because I never know how that's going to sound until I play it. But it could just as easily be Mango. I'm going to assume it's a Rebel and I'm going to guess that it's the Rebel... I think it's the Mango Rebel. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go for the Double um, double Cream Rebel Tenor. Oh. I've got my finger stuck in the sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, could I have a ukulele number two, please, when you're ready? Ah. Okay. This is... This is lovely. Now I played an extra long tune on that to try and give me more time to figure out what it is. I've got to say, before I guess, you know what, I've been really hard on you, Phil. The last few times that I've done it, we haven't let you touch the body. And I think the only time I've ever had to do this, I've been able to touch the body. And it's been really easy to identify what something is by touch. What I've noticed about this is I like the neck shape. I'm guessing it's a slotted headstock because it feels like it tapers out at the end. But it's got this really nice um, volute going in, which should be uh, a hint to me about what it is, but it is escaping me. So I'm going to assume it's something like a, maybe a Miller or a Pono, but sound wise, it doesn't sound like a Miller, so I'm probably wrong. very bright, it's vibrant, it's um, it's a really sweet ukulele. And the action's a bit too low for me, actually. I'm going to guess it's a Miller. I'm really not sure what model. 
and I can't think what we've got in stock, so I'm going to assume it's some kind of um, some kind of cedar top or a cypress topped Miller. I could be way out. I look forward to finding that one out at the end. That's a really good uke. Right. When you're ready, guys, I'll have uke number three, please. Uke number three. Okay. You got it? No. <laughs> That's the ticky ticky. I know it is because it has a nitrocellulose finish. So the second you play the neck, the neck feels 100 years old. And it's the only uke in the shop that has that right now that isn't 100 years old. And there's something about the feel of the neck on these. The neck on them is, is really thin and really flat and it plays itself. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need any more time. That is the Tiki Tiki Mango Tenor and they are superb. On your left. Lovely. Right, I'm enjoying this guys. <laughs> let's, um, let's see, so to speak, you number four. You can number four. <laughs> it's just take two, you can only number four. <laughs> Alright, okay. Oh. Oh, that sounds nice. Okay, this ukulele is making me rethink what I guessed for ukulele number two. Because this is a Miller. This is the Miller um, SWT. It's the ukulele that sounds like a guitar. And it has that Miller... It's a kind of snap. So when you attack a Miller, they, they have like this immediate sound, which makes me think I was wrong about the ukulele number two now, because this definitely... This ukulele has the percussive element that you like from Millers. It's the SWT, it's the one with the spruce top and the walnut back and sides. The one that shouldn't have been made, but was, and somebody one day is going to love that. As a result of that, we've not done this before. Do you want to have a second crack at number two? I'd love a second crack at number two, yes. Okay, here's number two again. <sighs> right, okay. What's going through my head? This sounds like a ukulele that's over 500 pounds to me. But I think... I think... Having just played that Miller, it lacks something about the feel that it has, you know, the ticky ticky. And I'm sure that both of those ukuleles are those ukuleles. This one, now I'm playing it a second time. It's, it's much, to me, it's much nicer than a Carla, first of all. You know, it's, it's not that level. It's not a snail, it's not that level. It doesn't feel like a flight, but it feels comparable to a flight. What have I, what, what haven't I thought of? It's not an Enya. It's louder, it's more vibrant than an Enya. An Enya's darker. It's not a Kai, it's louder than Kai's. Kai's tend to be mellow. Is it, it could be an Uma. I don't know the Uma brand well enough yet. I'm gonna assume it's an, an Uma. And I'm trying to think what Umas have a slotted headstock. This complete guess, I'm going to guess it's um, like an Uma UK 30, the Evo one. 
the ST, the UK30 ST Evo. I played one recently in a video. They're bright, but they're really sweet, you know, they... I could be completely wrong, and I'm, I'm going to feel really bad if it's like a Kamaka or something that's really expensive, but that feels to me like a really good intermediate priced uke, like a £500-ish uke. Uma. Let's go with the Uma. Is this the last one? This is the last one. The last ukulele of the day today. I've had to touch the tuner because it was out of tune. But I can tell by the way my arm is going over it. It's a jumbo uke. It sounds to me like the ukulele version of like a Pavarotti. It's got that like... If it was, you know, it's got that kind of a, like a, like a bassoon voicing. It could either be the Miller JA 260GB, which is a, an Acacia uke. But then I've had to touch the tuners and they're on the side. So, slightly educated guess, I'm going to assume that this is the Romero Grand Tenor Mango. That was, an, that was ambitious, wasn't it? Trying to find the 15th fret blindfolded. That is the Romero Creations Grand Tenor Mango, a fine uke. <laughs> right, cool. So I guess it's time for me to find out. Before you show them to me, can we just remember what I guessed? So uke number one. Number one, you guessed the Rebel um, Mango. The double cream. Double cream. Yeah, that could have been the Invictus, though. Okay. Number two, you originally thought was a Miller, but you've gone with an Uma. Uma. I stand by that. The more I thought about it after, and I played that last Uke. So Hello. <laughs> I thought that was the. Uh, I thought that was the Uma. Okay. Number three was the Tiki Tiki. I've not even. Hands down. It's a Tiki Tiki. Camera on the front. Number, now. number four the front was, I guess, the Miller. Number four, you guessed the Miller. And then number five was a Romero Creations Grand Tenor. Don't forget your banjo. Oh, yeah, the banjo in the middle. <laughs> the Canalea Monaco banjo. Cool. Right, can, you, go, can banjo, you guys though. show me then? Yep. Show me, show me, show me. Okay. Number one. I got it right. <laughs> number one was the Double Cream Tenor. Very cool. I really, really nearly got that one wrong. I really, really thought it was the Invictus. Okay. Ooh. So as I mentioned, number two is Gunji's Choice. Yeah. Bring okay. it around to you now. It was the Uber! <laughs> I did it right! Yeah. <laughs> the phone's rung, so I'm going to just pause the video a sec. So what the guys were just saying to me is that Gunzi was gutted that Phil gave me another chance at this because he thinks this is just awesome and it is i had in my head the moment i played it it was just like the inui nui amm series but it didn't sound like that and i know that we haven't got that in stock so i couldn't get out of my head what it was but now i'm holding it i just appreciate even more how good this uke is this is um that that's the uma uk 30 st that was number two i don't know who's got number three on the go what did i guess ticky ticky number three and it probably is oh my god he's so it's a ticky ticky. It's insane that these ukuleles haven't sold yet. I know we had four of them and we've got two left now, but these are just, if you're looking at a Canalea K1, if you're looking at a Koaloa, if you're looking at a Kamaka, if you're looking at something, you know, that you're gonna keep forever, you know, this is, this is a vintage Martin just made in a different country a hundred years later. This is so good. Um, yeah. I, I just don't understand how we've still got them. And every time I pick one up, there's nothing else in the shop like it right now. Yeah, good one to showcase in this video. Really good ukulele. Number four was the Miller. Oh, yeah. The SWT. 
I could tell in part because it had the 38mm nut width, but the Miller sound, and it's the only uke in the shop right now with that distinction. I actually bought one of the sister ukuleles of this, of this instrument very, very recently, um, just because I love how the neck feels and these tone wood combinations of satin finish. They're not as popular as really sexy looking gloss koa instruments or sexy looking acacia instruments, but they are, I mean, they're professional ukuleles and they are comparable to things that are two, three times the price. So that's great. We're going to jump in quickly and feel free to cut this from the video. That's but fine. I tried your uh, Miller yesterday at our recording session for the album and it's fantastic. I can't. I get that it's a it's a video for the shop and everything yeah. else, but it's just it's so good and it's brilliant. Are we recording an album? Are we? Is that going to be available soon? Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the final was the final it was woo, the the Ramiro Creations Grand Tenor in Mango. What a great uke to end things on. Thank you so much for watching the blindfold challenge. You guys can tell us who should be doing it next. Should we get Romeo on the sofa or Gunzi? And we'll try and get one of them filmed next week for you folks in time for the Jubilee.